Hello world, it's Craig. This is a follow-up to the last video, which was really just a sales pitch to get you interested in these solid-state music uh, S100 boards. These are the CB1A, it's an 8080-based single board computer. In that one, I told you I was going to make a reproduction. So this is an update on one of those reproduction boards. As an interesting turn of events, I came across this board and I picked it up and uh, this is a partially populated solid state music CB1A, the one that we're talking about. And you can tell that it wasn't professionally assembled, but it looks like they did a very good job of assembly. So that's good. It'll probably work. But the interesting thing is that only the processor portion was populated. So this board doesn't have any RAM or any ROM. No uh, reset vector jump, no keyboard input. They installed all of the voltage regulators, but the fingers are very lightly used. And uh, I don't know if they intended to come back and install the rest of the components, or maybe this is the way that they were using it in their system. I thought it was interesting that, uh, you know, I mentioned in the last video about the way that Solid State Music designed the boards so that only sub functions that were necessary could be populated. And I guess somebody took advantage of that option. So getting this one pretty much eliminates any desire I had to populate uh, or to build one of these unbuilt kits. Okay, so that's that. Let's get on to the uh, reproduction boards. Now, I did make two reproduction boards. This is the first one. This is the RS Latch version. This is the bare version of that. And then this is the second design. I basically just followed the hunches that I talked about in the last video to make these. This one, the RS version, was the one that I thought had a better chance of working. And on this latch, there's actually two layouts that I made of this. There's uh, this one where I have a uh, double socket up here, and then there's another one that I have laid out, but I didn't make it. I'll show you just the model for it in a bit, but it's got a double socket down, down here. And then there's a completely separate design, and this one has more I.O. than just the RS latch, but it does stray a bit more from the original solid state music intent. This one I'm going to talk about in the next video. In this video, I'm just going to uh, talk about this first version, this RS latch version. As a single board computer, it seems to be working just fine, including the serial port. So I have this connected up with a just one of the little USB dongle adapters here on the port, which is the serial port up here. I need to do some testing to see if it works. I have been doing some a little bit of testing in the S100 backplane. So there's still probably th some things left to see if it works. And I did find one mistake in this that needs to be uh, corrected. But to pick up from where I left off in the last video, the original W1 keyboard input socket. It's a 14 pin dip. It's got eight data lines, a strobe input to latch the byte, then two ground pins and three non-committed pins. And so remember the board already decoded the two port address addresses associated with this. One was to latch in the data and the other was just to get the status of the interrupt bit. So the odd address read in the data and then there was another one, the even address to read in the status bit or maybe it was the other way around. So to create a serial port, the idea was to simply add an RS latch in the socket and to use one of those port enable strobes to set the latch and therefore the transmit bit high and use the other port to reset the latch and that would set the transmit bit low. Either way, reading the data or the status bit would return the received bit. So that way you could bit bang out a serial port to a terminal by reading from these two ports. When the software is expecting a character from the terminal, then it just reads from the port that leaves the transmit in its idle state. So basically I just put in a 7400 in here to make an RS latch using those two addresses to toggle that latch. Then the output comes to the serial port and the, the received data from the serial port just is read along with that uh, status bit. Since it's using a USB to TTL serial level adapter, there's no need to swing the output of this plus or minus 12 or to buffer any of the inputs. The port interface is strictly TTL. I'm also not worried about the logic levels of a marker space since I can deal with that in software. But to help me remember which one is which, when I laid this out, I, I tried to do it so that the least significant bit of the port address is going to be the state of the transmit data. So if you set the port address to zero, 
then it transmits low. If you, if you pick the port address that ends in a one, then it transmits high. And so this all seemed simple and straightforward enough, but it really kind of turned into a sea of jumpers to allow this same socket to have the dual functions, to either be the keyboard connection or to put in a 7400 and allow it to be an RS latch. So if I, when I laid it out that way, we can see that I basically just had to have a row of jumpers down here, and I, I didn't really like that look. If we look at the schematic, and that header comes out as this 1x14, and it's repurposed as an RS latch using this cross-connected 7400 NAN. And this NAND is just here for visualization. It's not actually connected to that header, but this gives us an idea as to the best way to work in that NAND as we could. So our TTL serial port is up here. There's just three pins with the receive, transmit, and the ground to create the RS latch. I needed to cross connect two outputs to two inputs on the 7400. However, when it's used as a keyboard input, we can't have those two shorted. So that meant there had to be jumpers. So here's the 11 back into five and the six back into 12 jumpers. To operate the 8212 in transparent mode, because we're not going to be strobing this data in, we want to be able to always be able to read this data. So to operate it in transparent mode, we have to take the strobe to plus five, but it needs to be controlled by the keyboard when it's in keyboard mode, so it can't be hardwired to plus five. That required another jumper. The way they have it set up, both seven and eight are ground and pin 8 is an output to the NAND so that we don't get contention there. That needed to be a jumper to let the gate drive that pin and not have that tied down. And then finally, the interrupt output from the 8212, it's the status bit. So we need to reclaim that as our received data. So another jumper is required. And this one has to be a three pin or a one of two jumper because when it's in keyboard mode, we have to let the interrupt drive this pin. And then when it's in serial mode, we have to be able to drive that with our received data. So that's six jumpers. We got six jumpers already. Now, pin 13 was unused. And so I claimed that as the set input. And it would have been better for him to put a jumper there so that it can still be claimed by the keyboard. But you know, I was trying to eliminate the number of jumpers. And the same for pin 14, which is unused, but I need to take that to five volts. And if we want the ability to isolate those two in case the keyboard is using them for some reason, you know, because the keyboard needs five volts also, uh, then we're up to eight jumpers. And so as you can see, setting of the jumpers is critical to avoid burning out the chips because, you know, we actually have an output here that's connected to ground and we have two outputs that are, are conflicting with each other. And I don't mind if something doesn't work if the jumpers are set incorrectly, but it's really poor form to actually burn something out. So I had this once laid out with the jumpers all in place, and I just did not like that configuration of, you know, a misconfigured jumper uh, destroying a chip, particularly destroying this 8212, since that can be a pricey chip. So I worked on this corner of the board, this layout over and over again, and I just wasn't satisfied with the jumpers. I you know, could arrange them so it looked obvious, but still I didn't like this. You know, the logic was okay. It was just the aesthetics and that I didn't like and, and that problem with destroying chips. I really didn't like that chance of destroying chips. So in the end, I abandoned the idea of using a single socket for that purpose. And I went with this dual socket system. So there's you know the original W1 and then just offset from it is the... Uh, is the uh, socket for the 7400. You can see I just used machined sockets and they're just SIPs. So we just got a couple of rows of SIP sockets here. I can take this out. So you can see I just got a couple of rows of SIP sockets and you use the ones on that side, the top edge for the keyboard and use the one on the bottom side for the, uh, the latch. Now, if somebody doesn't ever want to use the serial port, they just don't have to populate the one for the the 7400 just put a regular socket in and you won't even after a while you'll even forget that just don't populate that don't populate this except for the w1 you'll forget it's there but now even with this configuration i was able to pull a few tricks and get rid of uh i needed i think three jumpers but i used some of the nand gates in here to get rid of those but i still am left with one jumper out here for that 8212. But at least I was able, I eliminated the five volt jumper on the strobe by using the five volts that comes in with the USB adapter to hold that strobe high. 
and no problem with, with conflict there because if you're using the keyboard, you're not going to have this guy plugged in. So you plug this in, that gives the 5 volts to hold that strobe high so that the, 20, the 8212 is in transparent mode. So if we look at the schematic again, you know, as, as we originally intended, these top two NAND gates are the RS latch. Here's where the reset comes in and the output is the transmit. Now the reason I'm using these bottom two NAND gates is that allowed me to eliminate a jumper because the receive signal is buffered through the NAND gate so it can drive the status bit transceiver and the 8212 but without shorting those two signals together when it's configured for the keyboard mode. So basically inserting the NAND gate just drives that onto the, the second one so that we didn't have to have a jumper to uh, either connect or, or disconnect those two. Now for future reference, if you find this uh, double socket offensive, as I mentioned earlier, I have another solution for this exact same design where I put the NAND gate socket under the 8212. And then the 8212 is used when it's in keyboard mode just like normal. Or you take the 8212 out, you put the 7400 in to use the serial port. So both aren't used at the same time. You either use the 8212 or the 7400. Now there was a little bit of difficulty. And, and so when you're doing that, they all just come up to the single socket up here. And so the board looks exactly the same as the original solid state music one when you just have the 8212 in and you can't see the, the, pin, the socket down there for the other one. But there was a the little bit of difficulty in doing that because the received data needs to be tri-stated before it's put onto the bus. And that's what we were using that 8212 for. Basically, when it came down to it, uh, we were putting that in transparent mode, but we were still using the output and able to, to tri-state this to put it onto the bus. But I found that there was an unused tri-state driver whose enable was not committed. And th these are ganged inside the package. They're hex drivers, but they have four on one enable and two on the other enable. And thankfully, when Solid State Music laid this board out, they had two of these that were non-committed, and they were two that had the same enable. So it wasn't until I was laying out the board and I discovered that there were two of the same enable that were uncommitted. So I used one of those alongside the uh, existing status bit transmitter. And so the existing status bit transmitter turns on when it's in status port. And then I put this one alongside it that just is enabled or the reading from the data port. Now I had these both laid out. And in the end, I only popped or I only ordered this one. I thought with having this up here, it'd be a little bit easier to do diagnostics on the board. But it turns out there weren't any problems on the board uh, to speak of. So, if I have, if I make this again, I think I'll only make the version that has the socket under this uh, 8212. And there's actually another advantage, and that is that I still have, I'm able to read in two bits. So I have the serial port that I'm reading in, but I'm also just reading in one more bit from the uh, the keyboard socket. So on that version that I didn't have printed, I didn't have the boards made, uh, we actually have two bits of input on that. This is the board. I have been running uh, test software on it, communicating with the board using its new port. It seems very happy to be able to talk directly to a terminal. I have tested it with the ROM at zero and the RAM above that, but then I change it and using the reset or the the vector on reset uh feature and so now i have the rom up at f000 which is where it is for their standard monitor and i have the ram down at zero so the the vector jump on restart seems to be working okay now i've been running on this little s100 backplane uh this is just a solid state it's 8k solid state music ram board and it's been working fine with that. But this is the only board that I've, I've tested it with. So I don't know. There, there could be some hidden problems in this that won't work with, with other cards. I still have to build and finish populating those solid state or those uh, uh, California Computer Systems I.O. card, which is the next thing that I want to run this board with. Now, I did find a mistake on this board that needs to be patched for these to work. Solid state music left off the ready pin on the 8224 clock chip. So they completely left it off on the schematic. I didn't notice it was entirely missing. I was just blindly you know, duplicating what they did. So they left it off, I left it off. That ready on pin three of the 8224, it has to be patched across to five volts. 
And the way I did that, there's just a little tiny patch that goes, this is the ready over here on pin three, and I just took that up to the five volts. So that needs to be patched on all of these, uh, on all of these boards. Other than a few silkscreen items that could be improved, that's the only mistake I have found that actually requires a patch. Uh, oh, I also messed up. You'll notice that my footprint for the heat sinks didn't have a mounting hole. Or I'm sorry, for the heat for the voltage regulators, didn't have a mounting hole. I'm not sure exactly how that happened, but uh, uh, have to drill the holes for these uh, uh, the voltage regulators. I suppose you could populate the voltage regulators vertically and just put a heat sink on it there. But laying them down on the board like this, you'll have to drill the holes for these voltage regulators. Okay, so I ordered five of these boards. I populated this one. And as usual, I'm going to be giving away the other four boards, but I do have my standard provisos. The first is that whoever asks for a board uh, would hope that they would at least be willing to pay for the shipping. So I'm going to be asking uh, whoever wants or gets one of these boards to pay for their own shipping. And the second is that whomever gets a board will actually build it and send me feedback on any problems they find uh, that are you know, a discrepancy from the original Solid State Music CB1 board. Now this fifth board is the one that I, I've, I patched it already and then I populated it and I've been using for testing. Now I'm going to remove all of these components and when I get this board, which is the other design, this isn't the other RS latch design, this is the design that has a, uh, a little mini I.O. port. I'm going to take all these components off that are socketed and use them in this one. And so then this one that is stripped of the socketed components, it's still gonna have the voltage regulators, it'll have the switches, it'll have everything that's soldered in. It's just not gonna have any chips on it. So this one's going to become a bit surplus. I can either uh, harvest it and take the voltage regulators back off and take some of the things back off, or I can just sell it to somebody that, uh, you know, wants, wants this board that's populated. And I'm, so I'm asking, you know, these boards are gonna be free, but this one, if you want this completely stripped of ICs, uh, you know, 25 bucks, and uh, you can have, have this one. If you want any of these, either the, uh, well, not that one, that one's this other version. So if you want any of these, you want either one of these four bare boards I have left or this one that's gonna be stripped of the ICs for the $25, leave a comment below to indicate you know, what you would like to join the queue. So I use the comments as the queue and then email me a uh, link to my contact page is in the description, and then we can work out the shipping details. Ideally, you'll just send me a, a self-addressed or a, a shipping label so I can pop this in an envelope and, and send it to you. Now, this other design, it may be a while until I get to it. Uh, I have to order some more components. There was a chip that I didn't have for this, so it may be uh, the new year before I get I get this one when done. And I'll do a video on that as soon as I, I get it ready. You know, the next couple of weeks, this is, you know, is this the week? This is the week before Christmas. And so I expect my wife has things for me to do between now and Christmas. She tells me I've already gotten her Christmas present, which makes me really happy to hear. And she actually showed it to me. It's jewelry. It's very pretty, but I still have to wrap it. So that's uh, my Christmas shopping is almost done, I'm, I'm told. Okay, that is it for this video. As always, monetization is turned off. This channel is entirely powered by sharing, likes, subscribing, and engaging comments. I will talk with you later. Bye-bye.